When I was uh, in grade school, I was overweight. Uh, I've always been overweight. I've always battled with my weight. I've had a couple seasons in my life where I've been in, uh, where by anyone's standards, you would say he's in great shape. <clears throat> where I was, you know, really thin and also fit. But most of my life, I've been overweight. But I'll tell you, what I've learned So I want to talk about uh, a subject that's really important, um, something that has affected me for a large part of my life. Um, it's, it's kind of been a blessing and a, and a curse. Um, you know, uh, I was rejected by my natural parents when I was a kid. Um, and I think that that actually started me on a path of kind of self-loathing or uh, some kind of, um, you know, um, abandonment issues, rejection issues. And then, of course, uh, going through school, uh, you know, el elementary school, uh, I, was, uh, I was overweight and I was, like, uh, teased by so many kids. Uh, and it, I carried that, you know, into my teens. And, you know, I found music and I found out I was a pretty good uh, intuitive, uh, I just had a, I have a skill for music. Uh, and I started playing guitar and I got validation from being really awesome on the guitar. You know, when I was 16, 17, 18 years old, I was playing Eddie Van Halen stuff, Note for Note, Randy Rhodes, and all that heavy metal stuff. It was awesome. Uh, and the thing that motivated me uh, was the thing that was broken in me was the need for validation, the need to show the world how good I was. You know, and I did it through works. I did it uh, through insecurity. I was so insecure um, as, as a teen in my 20s, and even in my 30s, I was so insecure that uh, everything that I did, I attacked massively because I needed to be the best at it to show the world how good I was. Not that I'm that good. I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to brag here. I'm trying to say that that was the motivation. It was the wrong motivation. Uh, and so I'm speaking to those of you that have low self-esteem, poor self-image, rejection issues, abandonment issues. And I just want to say that uh, you need to come to this place of healing where you forgive the people who have hurt you, the, the people that have spoken negative words over you, the people who have uh, crushed your spirit. Forgive them. And forgiveness is a choice, not a feeling. You might not feel forgiveness, but you can choose forgiveness, just like writing a check. You know, sometimes you can feel a certain kind of way about paying a bill, but when you write the check, it cashes, regardless of how you feel. It's the same with forgiveness. And when you get over um, trying to, to prove to the world that you're, you're worthy of love, and you start loving yourself for exactly who you are, when you can stand in the mirror naked and love yourself, regardless of what you look like, you know, uh, that's when you really start to break out and break through and win. When we were kids, we all wanted to fit in. And there were so many labels. And labels really stunt us. Judging people and labeling people really stunts us as human beings. We're created to be infinite. We're created to spend eternity in heaven. We're created to uh, be mini G's, right? Mini G's, where our words, our thoughts, uh, become things. Uh, we manifest in our own life. And I want to manifest uh, loving relationships, and I want uh, people in, in my life to be uh, around, you know, because, uh, because they value me as a person, not because uh, I worked so hard to accomplish this thing or that thing. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not saying that we don't have to go out there and hustle, but what I am saying is our motivation has to be that we don't have something to prove to the world you know, now I'm out there hustling because I want the lifestyle, I want the security, I want the residual income, and I want to help people. I love what I do. So that's my two cents for you guys. Anyone out there that is suffering with low self-esteem, just take, you know, just stop this video and just forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for holding yourself to a standard that's unreasonable. And uh, forgive the people who have spoken those negative words over you you might find a whole bunch of emotions come up. Sometimes you, you got wounds that you're not even aware of. And you know, give them to the Lord. So I'm here with CJ. 
down on the plaza, right. and CJ has the sign. Can you show the sign, sir? Free listening. CJ, tell them what it means. So listening has two purposes. One, we're down here working on communication skills, so simply just developing our listening skills more so. And then secondly, we learned in class that listening is so close to being low that people often can't tell the difference. So we're simply just listening to what people have to say down here on the plaza. So you see great value in just listening to another person and caring about what that other person has to say. Very, very true. So um, oftentimes people will be trying to have a conversation, looking in one direction, not really focusing on what people are saying. And oftentimes the person that they're talking to are often go, huh, I didn't catch that. What are you trying to say? But here um, in developing our communication skills, we're trying to get rid of that and really li li listen to what a person has to say as opposed to casting them off, not really caring what 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 they have to say. Or having your nose in your phone. True. I, I see people at restaurants, right. married couples, sitting there, both of them with their noses in their phone. I don't get it, man. True. With, with, with technology these days, it makes it even that much harder in order to have a face-to-face -face conversation. Oftentimes, people people have a lot to say. Like, I mean, who knows that random person you walk past on the street, what impact on their life you could have by just listening to them for five minutes out of your day as opposed to having your nose in your phone or casting them off as, I don't have time for something. You know, uh, there's an old saying, they say, God gave you two ears because you're supposed to listen twice as much as you speak, yep. right? My mom so, used to tell me that all the time. So, yeah. two, two ears and one mouth, so I mean, I need to listen more. Right, so the takeaway for today, ladies and gentlemen, become a better listener. Listening is key to success. I did a post about two months ago. I said, listen until you're heard. Makes Amen? Sense. All I right. appreciate your time, Tom. Thanks, CJ. God bless you, man. Lake Winnebago. I know it's a little dim, but uh, I'm here in Union Station. I have a P.O. box here. I don't know how much the camera will pick up, but if you can see the incredible ornate ceiling. So many people come to Union Station and they never look up at that ceiling. Um, just an incredible uh, structure. So beautiful. I came to check my mailbox and uh, decided to go for a little walk. We had a, a nice late, late dinner at the hotel. And I thought, you know, let me, let me get a little walk in before I get home to help digest. It's been a really great day. It was a, just a really busy day, running errands all day. Uh, did some time lapse today. Went to Winnebago Lake and got my, my new lenses. I don't know if you guys noticed, but they're not near as reflective. Still a little reflective, but boy, that non-reflective coating really, really does work. Uh, today we had uh, thunder showers. Uh, you know when the, when the rain is coming down so so hard that your wipers almost can't move quick enough. We we drove through that. We had some great Thai food. Um, just been a really good productive day, and uh, it's about to come to an end. We'll probably cap it off with a glass of wine. I'm hanging out with my buddy Edwin. He's going to probably go on his way here pretty quick. And uh, tomorrow's another day. How are you guys doing in Entrepreneur Land?